In this chapter, we're going to look at uh, the roles of unions in the labor market. Now, the first is, what is a labor union? A labor unit is any organization of workers whose primary objective is to improve the pecuniary and non-pecuniary conditions of employment among members. Now, unions bargain overall um, and for practically all aspects of a contract. The most notable is paying benefits, but there's also work conditions, policies about hiring, overtime promotion, um, and the ways by which grievances are settled. So a union, and when there's union deals, they encompass a pretty vast variety of different topics. Uh, now, if we talk about just international comparisons of unionism, um, in the United States, unionization has declined much more rapidly than um, other nations. Um, the United States and Japan have very low union rates, and the differences with it, with unionization really vary depending on the political effectiveness of the union movements, um, the abilities of unions to push for their rights, um, and so forth. Now, the legal structures of unions in the United States... Um, there's been a lot of different laws that have hindered or um, expanded the rights of unions. Uh, the first was, or sorry, the the first thing to note is that unions were not popular prior to the Great Depression, um, but that attitude really changed after the Great Depression because of the um, way that employees were treated during this period because the market was so um, soft to where there weren't many jobs and so there's a lot of excess supply of labor. Um, now after that time a lot of major laws have shaped the labor movement. movement. Uh, the North LaGuardia Act of 1932 uh, it restricted court orders and injunctions that hampered the union movement and so it allowed these movements to move forward without courts stopping them um, without employers being able to stop them. Uh, the National Labor Relations Act of 1935 uh, defined unfair labor practices. It also required employers to bargain in good faith with unions. And most importantly, it gave workers the right to organize, to form as one, which they weren't always allowed to do. Uh, the Taft-Hartley Act it could, it kind of took back some of the power from the unions. Um, it curbed excessive powers of unions, and it allowed states to pass what are called right to work laws. And the right to work laws, they're really important because with some unions, the the group can require all members pay union dues and with the right to work it prevented um, unions from doing this so it, sa it said that unions were not allowed to require all people who work in that occupation to be union members and so if you think of an example of a requirement the a lot of times teachers unions may have all teachers pay um, for uh, union membership. Now the reason why this was negative for the unions is because um, they would see a vast reduction in union membership which is a vast which is a big drop in the union dues that were paid and with less money they were not as effective in negotiating for their groups. The um, Landrum Griffin Act it's not necessarily good or bad for unions per se, but it requires disclosure of union activities and finances. And so it just it helped to make sure that any illegal or unethical union practices would be would come to light. Uh, government unions, government unions are a little bit different than private. Government workers were able to unionize after 1962. 
um, but they are prohibited to actually go on strike, especially at the federal level. Uh, union membership in, overall, it peaked after World War II, but it's been steadily falling since. And so, as I mentioned, unionization in the United States has fallen at a much faster rate compared to other countries.